Dr. Jha, thanks for joining us. We really appreciate it. We've got a lot of questions for you. So let's start with, we have been dealing with this smoke for weeks now. What are the long-term risks from breathing all this stuff in for so long? Is there a cumulative effect, as one of our viewers asked? Is it going to be affecting us later like the coal mines did for people? Thank you for that question. And I think that's the probably the most popular and most important question people want to know. So I definitely don't think it's going to be affecting us the way the coal, coal mines did. I don't think it's going to be that severe. You know, we're dealing with, uh, we have to make decisions in the midst of having incomplete information. And you can look at the research that's been done about wildfire smoke and compare it to the more extensive research which has been done about pollu polluted cities, in other words, air pollution in cities. When you look at chronic air pollution in cities, you know, year round, that's been shown to cause increased respiratory problems and disease and worse lung function. It's been shown to cause increased cardiovascular disease, meaning heart attacks, etc. And air pollution in cities chronically long term has been shown to cause basically more deaths, meaning an increase in all cause mortality. The good news is when you look at wildfire smoke, uh, and I'm sorry, I'm just getting some, some feedback here on my uh, headset. When you look at wildfire smoke, um, you get, uh, you get, there's been uh, shown to be an increase in uh, respiratory problems, meaning bronchitis, potentially pneumonia, et cetera, but not, not the other things have not been shown, meaning an increase in all-cause mortality or an increase in cardiovascular effects. The jury is still out on those. The research is mixed on those endpoints. So um, what's, what has been shown is an increase in respiratory illnesses. Well, people with heart uh, and lung problems, they obviously have risks with this uh, air quality. But what about the people who, you know, were otherwise healthy? How much of a risk is it for most people? Well, for, for most people, the risk increases when the, the, the worse the air quality. So if you're talking about air quality in the orange zone and if people are uh, going out a little bit in the red zone a little bit each day to get just a little bit of daily activity, then that's probably acceptable. Um, the point is that people should minimize it really as much as possible because we don't know how much, for example, every more hour outside in the red zone, we don't know what that means. There's no mm -hmm. research to be that granular and that detailed. Another viewer is asking, is it normal to constantly get headaches from the smoky air, even if you're indoors, if, if it's all triggering these coughing fits, is it okay maybe to use a cough suppressant or better to just cough it out and get those irritants out? You know, to the first part of that question, I wouldn't say that it's normal to continually get headaches while indoors. Uh, I think that certainly one can get headaches as part of this smoke exposure, especially if you're outdoors. But I would expect those headaches to be short lived. And if someone is continually getting headaches, then that may be the sign of something else. And you should ask your provider. As far as the second part of the question, you know, I think it's certainly OK to use lozenges and uh, briefly cough suppressant pills that you can find over the counter. I think that cough is a protective mechanism to get some of that material out. And uh, I think your worst coughing would be when you're being right exposed to that, uh, you know, to the, to the really smoky air. And I think actually that an over-the-counter cough suppressant wouldn't prevent that cough. Your body would, would be able to still cough out what it needs to, what it can. But remember that the really small particles, they get inhaled deep inside, and those are the ones that really cause damage. So if you have to be outside, let's say you don't have the N95 mask protection, are there modifications, this viewer wants to know, that you can make uh, to a cloth or surgical mask to make those more protective? You know, that's a great question. I haven't seen any modifications to the surgical mask. I did see, you know, on the internet, but I, I'm not familiar with the details, 
uh, a way to where someone was adding layers, in other words, adding silk or some other layer to mm. uh, to their cloth mask in order to make it more effective. And I think something like that could be of value, uh, although I don't know if there are studies about it. Well, another viewer asks, I really want to run. Do you have uh, any recommendations for a special face mask that would filter the air for me? Well, that's a great question. I mean, the short answer is N95. <laughs> if you can run in an N95, mm -hmm. that's quite difficult. As we know, it's just hard to stay in an N95 just uh, day long. It's quite hard to just breathe in it and do daily activities. So, um, but I'm not aware of another mask uh, especially for running. And Susan but France. I would also just. Ad no, go sorry, ahead. Go ahead. No, no, go I ahead. I would finish. just advise that person. I mean, this is obvious, but I would just advise that person to keep an eye on the air quality and it may be better the next day or the day after that. So I would consider postponing it to a day when it's better. We're all hoping for that day sooner rather than later. Um, Susan France of South San Francisco wants to know, is it safe to race walk when the air quality is moderate if you have no other health problems? Yes, yes. So moderate air quality in the 50 to 100 range would be safe. And this is sort of a follow up, but a viewer wants to know how much time has to be spent outside to have these lasting effects. Is it hours a day? Is it just minutes? And if you do go out for a few minutes daily, what is the risk of long term damage? You know, I think for someone without who's not in one of the vulnerable groups, you know, in, um, a few minutes each day in the in the orange or in the red is acceptable because I think someone who's asking that question is already alert to the idea of minimizing the time. Hmm. And so I think they're already trying to protect their health. A few minutes each day, I think, is acceptable when people need to get out. I just think people need to minimize it as much as possible. The exact number of minutes or hours that does the damage, that kind of granular detail is not is not known. That information is not available that I know. Let's switch inside. How do you keep the indoor air quality safe? This viewer wants to know. And what are the health implications for for pets and even infants? Well, uh, Certainly for inf infants, people should know that, you know, kids and really up to age 18, but what I'm about to say is, is more applicable even to smaller kids, they actually breathe more air per pound of body weight. So even though mm. they may breathe less air than, a, than an adult, they breathe more air per pound of body weight. That's why, that's one of the reasons why pollutants may affect kids more. And that applies all the way up to age 18. In addition, their lungs are still developing. So that's another reason why they, they could be more affected. So um, that's why they're considered one of the vulnerable groups. Now, in terms of indoors, people are running HEPA filters if they have them. I think that's great. Another idea that is quite good is really just if you can't HEPA filter the whole house, if you can find a clean room, meaning it's, it's usually an interior room with kind of fewer windows, if you can run the HEPA filter in that room and just focus on keeping that room clean, that should help a great deal. Uh, as far as pets, you know, that's kind of outside of my area. I'm not, uh, I can't comment to that in detail, but I would expect a lot of the same effects on our pets. Well, let's talk about the really young ones because Jenna Priest of Fremont wants to know what's the best way to help prevent newborns from having any lung damage, even indoors. Is a HEPA, HEPA filter really helpful? Yes, it, it can be helpful if you can obtain one and if you can uh, run it. Um, I would say for that, for that newborn, a clean room where you really focus on keeping the air in that room clean, that would be uh, helpful. And from Trish uh, Lopez, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, in San Francisco, she has been posting about the air quality on Instagram, and she wants to know how effective is it to just close the windows? She says she's in an old building in San Francisco, as many of them are, very drafty. Uh, you get that leak through the windows and the doors. Should they seal up the windows, or is it enough to have that HEPA air filter running in the house? They do have small children, by the way. You know, I think that... Uh you know, so, some fresh air has to be brought in at times, uh, limited in amounts. 
I think what's uh, what people can feel can take some comfort in is that after time, even it, even though some particular matter may come in, it mm. will settle to the ground. So I don't necessarily think they have to seal the windows, but but focusing on the HEPA filter, focusing on uh, avoiding even things like vacuuming, anything that can stir up the dust in the air mm. and contribute to the indoor air pollution should be minimized during these times. And someone wants to know, opening a window a little bit at night to recycle the air, is that okay? Is that a good thing? I'm sorry, I had interference in that. Do you mind just repeating it? No, not at all. Someone else wanted to know, opening a window a little bit at night to recycle the air, it sounds like that might be a good thing. I think a little, I think a little bit will bring in some fresh air, though it has the air quality that it does, but those particles will settle inside, you know, after some time, they'll settle on the ground. And so I think you, we're just trying to make the best of a bad <laughs> situation. And so bringing in a little bit of air uh, at times, limited amount may be okay. Well, and Carly Milana of San Francisco wants to know, even if we keep the windows and doors closed, is this stuff still getting inside? I think I can say from my house, I think it is. HEPA air, filter, air filters, will that help with that? It does, it does. It will, it will clean the air. Again, people have to kind of keep in mind that, you know, are people talking about the HEPA filter for the whole house mm -hmm. or are people talking about just for a room? Because if people, let's say, don't have a HEPA filter for the whole house and they just have one that's room size, it's only going to clean a certain amount of, you know, square footage. Sure. In other words, people shouldn't affect, shouldn't expect that it's going to be able to manage the air for the whole house if it's only designed for one room. So another viewer wants to know, after the readings get better, after the AQI lowers, is it advised to still stay indoors for any amount of time after, or is it immediately okay to go out? I think if the it's fine to go out if the if the AQI is, is saying that it's reached a better number, then the, the sensors are are detecting that. And I think you can feel confident in going out at that time. Anybody who's driven around and looked at car, other cars knows what it, what this stuff looks like. The particles are settling on cars. A viewer wants to know, can they still become airborne as people get out and drive before they wash that stuff off? I think to a little bit of extent it can, but I don't think that's a major concern. I think that uh, once that has settled on a car or on the ground, I think that most of the damage that it could have done, you know, has passed. Hmm. Um, but I think that before it settled, while it was still airborne, that's when it was a real danger. And again, what's, what, what's I think of interest is what you can see on the car, a lot of that ash represents a danger, but a lot of those particles are larger mm -hmm. than the problematic particles. The really problematic particles are those PM 2.5, which are tiny, tinier than you can see with your eye, but which get inhaled deep into the lungs. And maybe just t as a follow-up, take a second or two to answer that question about why is it that the smaller particles are more harmful than the big stuff we see settling? Sure. The basic reason is because they get inhaled more deeply into the lungs. Uh, because they are smaller, they are carried along the airflow into the alveolar spaces or into the smaller air passages of the lungs, and they cause inflammation and they cause oxidative stress. Mm. And the larger particles, they may get trapped higher up and they may not re reach deep down into the body. So the, the smaller air particles get in deeper and that's where they cause their trouble. So another viewer asks, is it safe to be inside of a car with uh, the windows rolled up, having the air conditioner on, if you're not wearing a mask in the car? So yes, you know, it is safer than, than being outside. Um, you know, I was looking into this a little bit before the call, and newer cars have cabin air filters, cabin air filters, which they don't filter the, you know, I'm not an automotive expert, but from what I understand, they don't filter the air that's already in the cars, but they filter the air coming into the cars. Mm. So if, you're, if your car is newer and has a cabin air filter, and especially if it is one that, that you've, you've had a HEPA filter you know, attached to it, that can really be helpful in terms of cleaning the uh, incoming air. If you don't have that, 
you know, what you would do is just run your car on recirculate and just use the air that's inside the car only. Um, and that's the really the best thing we can do. Dr. Jha, thank you so much for all of your time. We really appreciate it. It's been very insightful. I know that uh, our viewers and those logging onto our website also appreciate it. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. All right. Take care.